especially when the Reichstag, the embodiment of the people, was set on fire. With judges, justice was still a possibility. In Leipzig, the Reichstag fire trial was the Nazis' first show trial. But the evidence was weak and the accused were acquitted. Was Hitler's Germany still a state under legitimate rule of law? In the People's Observer, it said, a miscarriage of justice. It wasn't enough for Hitler that they had been acquitted. And in the spring of 34, the People's Court was set up. I think it was 34. Because the normal courts weren't strict enough for Hitler, or not sufficiently brainwashed. That was the real reason. Political matters were to be taken care of by the People's Court. Taking care of meant putting the opposition behind bars. Communists, trade unionists, social democrats. For Freisler, the herald of the new justice, they were traitors of the state. As the Führer's powers increased, those who revered him most became his first victims. Enemies were simply eliminated. On that occasion, other scores were settled. The former Reich's Chancellor, von Schleicher, was an obstacle on the road to absolute power. They murdered to order, but I'm sure they didn't have orders to kill my mother. But as she was in the same room, they saw her as a threat to their story. She was a witness, and because they were supposed to say later that my father had resisted them, they shot her immediately. In reality, after they gained entry, all they had asked my father was, are you General von Schleicher? He said yes, and the shooting started. The Guardian of Justice hushed up the story. A civil servant, Grützner, appeared at the scene, noted down what there was to take note of and immediately prepared a document entitled Political Murder. But that evening, Freisler, who was Secretary of State in the Reich's Ministry of Justice at the time, appeared at Grützner's flat and said, the documents must disappear. That was no political murder, that was suicide. Using the threat of violence, society was made to conform. They were willing to take orders. He wanted them to be like the master race. The cult of Germanic and racial madness in one breath. Anybody who didn't comply with the vision had no right to live according to the regime. The mentally ill were defamed, publicly humiliated, and later murdered according to the new law. Alles Lebensschwache geht in der Natur unfehlbar zugrunde. Wir Menschen haben gegen dieses Gesetz der natürlichen Auslese in den letzten Jahrzehnten furchtbar gesündigt. Wer Unkraut verhindert, fördert das Wertvolle. Auch für Sie müssen gesunde deutsche Volksgenossen arbeiten. Wenn wir heute das große Gesetz von der Auslese mit humanen Mitteln künstlich wiederherstellen, dann stellen wir damit die Ehrfurcht vor den Gesetzen des Schöpfers wieder her. The law is the law. And if it says in the law books that all cyclists are to be sentenced to death, then the judge will say, you are a cyclist, you are sentenced to death. It says so here. That is a positivism. The belief in the law to the detriment of justice was a major mistake made by these people. But fear also played a part. Those who might become victims were also terrified. Tens of thousands of Germans left the country. 
Emigres, they were fleeing from the legal dictates of the terror. All of society was rotten. The poison was in the bloodstream. Nobody trusted anybody else. And this was in a German state which had postulated, above all, that its highest goal was the friendship of all German people. The grand illusion of the Third Reich. But behind the facade, denunciation and mistrust. In the meantime, Freisler went on an educational trip. At the end of 1938, I think, he went to the Tushachevsky trial in Moscow and he sat in on Vyshinsky's prosecution. Moscow. Lessons from Stalin's executioners. The former Russian camp commissar understood the plan. Of course this pleased people like Himmler. Then they could say, this man is 100%. You can trust him. And he said to me once, be glad you're an important man. These people with troubled consciences, they are the only ones we are certain of. They have nowhere else to go. The summer of 1939. Everything seemed normal. The Germans were behaving as though they hadn't a care in the world, but a storm was brewing. Hitler decided the time was right. The people needed Lebensraum, space in which to live. In September, Poland was overrun. International law had been broken. At home, a warlike administration of justice began. The tank divisions will administer justice for us, Freisler decreed. I am a political soldier of my Führer, Adolf Hitler. He often used these words, like a slogan. For the cinema goer, life was full of hope, except that the messages had an ominous ring. Anyone who failed to heed the warning could end up here, at the guillotine. Decapitation was merciful. Shooting or hanging was for traitors. In my cousin's case, he was in the resistance, and the people who took him to the scaffold said, we can't do anything about it. And he said, don't pity me. They are the ones to be pitied. I pray for them. Then they beheaded him. 